I've been using the brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max for a solid week now. So it's time to find out what's good, what's bad, and what's just kinda meh. And I have to admit, listening into the announcement, I was pretty bland about the whole thing. But after the past week, I do feel that I was wrong to prejudge the iPhone 15 Pro Max. But before we hop into that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, iFixit. Starting off, let's go over the specs and ordering options. If this is somehow your very first time hearing about the latest, biggest, and maddest, mattiest, dullest? Like it's got a, a nice matte sheen to it? iPhone. The version that I personally bought, nobody provided me this phone, is the blue titanium base model with 256 gigabytes of storage. That model comes in at a base price of $1199, which dang, yes, that is, whoo, that is steep. Remember when flagship phones were like $400 and then you bought them, you got a huge discount when you signed up for your cell service? The everyday dad. He remembers. Here you will get a 6.7 inch Super Retina XDR display that has a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio. It can go to 1000 nits of max brightness indoors and 2000 nits max brightness outdoors. The iPhone 15 Pro Max is powered by a brand new A17 Pro processor that has a 6 core CPU, 6 core GPU, and a 16 core neural engine. It has a whole new camera system and for the specs, you can take as wide as 12 millimeter full frame equivalent photos to 120 millimeter equivalent photos. And I do like the camera a lot here. I haven't had a chance to use that so much so we will not be talking too much about that now. We'll get that in a follow up video. With that homework out of the way, let's hop into what I've liked and disliked after this week of use. And as a big asterisk like right here uh, I want to make is if you watch the unboxing video you know that I recently broke my ankle and have been kind of trapped indoors so I regrettably haven't had a chance to go running or backpacking with the phone yet again like I said we'll do a follow-up video in about six weeks when I can actually go out and do things for those aspects of the phone first off on the things I like I really really like the body of this phone. The materials are fine, titanium is cool and makes other cool things, right? And I'm sure if I broke out a food scale, this might be slightly lighter than my iPhone 14 Pro Max. But that's not what I'm talking about when I say I like the body. What I really like is they finally did exactly what I've been asking for literal years at this point. The entire body of this phone, minus the front screen, has a crazy high quality feeling matte finish. I cannot overstate how good this looks and how good it feels to hold. Without any exaggeration, this is my favorite feeling, like favorite to use phone construction of all time. Full disclosure though, I haven't yet had a chance to check out the iPhone 15 standard because apparently the one I bought is lost in the mail somewhere. So eventually we will, but not today. I think if you were gonna drop this kind of money on a phone, it really has to nail that high class premium aesthetic and feel. And while I routinely complained about the 13 and 14 Pro Max stainless steel sides, this straight up feels amazing. And this is the first time, maybe ever, that I'll be going fully caseless. So look out world, I'm going wild. Also, I've not heard great things about the new woven cases. Maybe I will buy one just to see how durable it actually is. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see that. One thing that has finally gone from a dislike to something I'm used to now and kind of like is the dynamic island. This was introduced last year as a way to turn the notch into something useful while increasing the bezels on the phone. And over the past year, it's kind of been a big annoyance for me because it's always emoting or doing something weird. It's always just drawing my attention to the top of my phone. But now a ton of external developers have latched onto it and this thing shows a surprising amount of information and usability and it's actually become pretty darn important to me. So again, Gary here is totally not infallible and sometimes you can eventually come around to things and change your mind. I know, hey, on the internet, we're not allowed to change our minds, but sometimes I do anyway, because I'm a rule breaker. No, I'm not actually. I think you need to put more rules on top of rules to not accidentally break them. Thanks again today to iFixit for sponsoring this video. You can learn how to fix just about anything at iFixit.com. Search through thousands of free repaired guides and find the high quality parts and precision tools to fix your phones, laptops, game consoles, and so much more. And for the month of September, you can actually skip the upgrade because they have 20% off all phone parts, excluding Samsung. Use code FIXSHIP at the link below to get free shipping on those phone kits. Another thing I've really liked is the new standby mode. This is an iOS 17 feature, not exactly an iPhone feature, but can you really separate the two? Either way, this new ability turns the iPhone into a desk clock when it's charging and in a horizontal position. You don't have to turn anything on, you just put it on the charger to turn it horizontal and it starts working. I've been using my phone as my alarm clock and desk clock for, well, 
10 years at this point, and no one's really nailed that replacement for me for what I used to have sitting next to me. All I really want to be able to do is look over and see the time and what day of the week it is, because you might be surprised, but the older I get, the more I find that harder to remember. It's so simple, it's so elegant, and I really like it. It's even base set to a red light, very low knit output. So if you check it in the middle of the night, you aren't blinded or damaging your night vision uh, if you then have to get up and start getting ready for the day. If I did have to give a meh, I'm going to give that to the battery life. Now, there is some context for this meh that is important. If you look at all other cell phones I've used, this still has the best battery life I've ever seen. In fact, right now, I'm working on two days without a charge and we're at 42%. So it's good. But I do consider it meh because I found it slightly worse than previous iterations. Could that be because of the new beefy processor? Some kind of new thermal management process needed because of the new chassis materials? I don't know and honestly once you get to this level of battery life, better and better doesn't really get you very far. But I have actually had a feeling of less like, it just feels more constraining year over year and I have to call them like I seize them. Not a deal breaker in any way, shape, or form. Something else I think I'll have to grow into being excited about, surprisingly enough, the big headlining feature this year is the USB-C. This is probably due to the fact that I haven't traveled in the past week and I've been stuck either upstairs on my couch or downstairs with lots of struggle and like, it takes me some time to get down here, uh, into my office. So I really haven't plugged the phone into anything. And what's funny is when I sat down to mull this over when I was typing the script, I realized I haven't actually been charging my phone with a cable for a very long time now. Like we said earlier, I have a wireless charging stand by my bed that does all of my charging. So this hasn't, I haven't actually used the USB-C port yet. Yes, I'm actually still happy that this is there and I'm really happy for when I can get out and about and begin to lessen my cable quantity. But in the first week, it has been a non-issue 100% of the time. Plus, I don't make movies or anything with my phones. So the ability to transfer huge amounts of data over that USB 3 pipe is another cool marketing tech spec, but in reality, the only people that will ever use that are a very small section of folks of which I am not one. I've also continued to really like the beautiful display year over year. Not a lot has changed since the iPhone Pro 13 and 14 lineup, so I won't spend too much talking about this today, but the bezels are ever so slightly slimmer here, and the display does feel a little more lively when I have the two years of phones right next to each other. That could be an iOS 16 versus 17 thing and animations and all that stuff, and even more so if you don't have the two right next to each other, you wouldn't notice the difference but I think it looks really great. Power-wise, I am planning on doing a follow-up video about gaming on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. However, I want to wait until some of the headlining AAA games make it to this device. Apple keeps going on and on about Resident Evil Village, which is a rare game that I actually played and beat on my PS5 what, a couple of years ago at this point. So when that comes out, we'll do the bigger gaming test. I don't know that I want to show off the raw power for the display on Fruit Ninja. Do people still play Fruit Ninja? Otherwise, the A17 Pro will get you plenty of YouTube or movie watching straight from the phone and should give you many years of software updates, keeping this relevant into the future, 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 future. So at the end of the day, would I recommend you buy the iPhone 15 Pro Max? I would say if you have a 12 Pro Max or earlier, this would be a fantastic upgrade getting you into the modern Apple screen tech. If you are in a 13 or 14 Pro Max, meh, I guess if you really want USB-C and a titanium finish. We're clearly in the upgrade every three years or so with iPhones anymore, so I wouldn't recommend going out every year and getting the latest and greatest. These are evolutions, not revolutions. The only caveat would be if you absolutely have to get rid of lightning cables and are retooling a travel kit to run off USB-C, well then in that case, yes, go from the 14 to the 15, but that's really it. What about you? Have you gotten the 15 or 15 Pro Max? What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, click here to check out the 14 and the 15 head to head. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.